morning, everybody. So good to see you. So happy to be here with you. I hope you're happy to be with us. And all those online, we're so grateful that you're tuning in and hopefully the word blesses you this morning. Amen. Well, we started last week a course on prayer, and uh, for a couple of weeks we're we're doing that. We're studying prayer and different aspects of it, because what can happen is we can get so busy in life that that some of the spiritual things that are so important that we latch onto and and keep in, uh, keep going on with, um, is so important that we follow through, and prayer is one of those things. Amen? Amen? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you your anointing strengthens me and helps me. And Heavenly Father, thank you that your word is truth, and the truth shall prevail. Amen? Amen. Okay, so uh, we started off last week, and we're latching back on again. One of the things I want us to look at, or I believe he wants us to look at this morning, is the fact that there is power in prayer. We forget that. We forget how much power we have available to us. And uh, power is very, very important. Without power, uh, you can't change things. So power is very, very important. Let's look at a, um, a scripture that is going to really help us this morning, and that is in James. James 16 to 5, 16 to 18. James 5, 16 to 18. Um, now, this is the story of, well, just picking us up here, uh, of faith. This, this verse is here of, uh, of faith. Um, Verse 13, is any one of you in trouble, he should pray. Is anyone happy? So if anyone's in trouble, pray, 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 pray. Not get on the phone to somebody. Get your spiritual attachment going to the Lord. Amen? So is anyone in your trouble, he or she should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. We've been doing that this morning. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over them, him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer, verse 15 says, offered in faith will make the sick person well. Amen, Lillian? Will make the sick person well and the Lord will raise him or her up. Hallelujah. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Prayer of a righteous man, righteous woman, powerful and effective. Now, we're jumping now, verse 17, to the story of Elijah. Well, not really the story of Elijah. We don't need to do that. But the verse says, Elijah was a man, mere human, just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did rain, uh, sorry, it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. So the power of Elijah's prayer, was Elijah anything different from us? He didn't have the Spirit of God on the inside of him, did he? He was a mere mortal human, but his prayer made dynamic effects. So he he prayed that there'd be no rain on the land for three and a half years. And then verse 18 says, and then again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain. Did you see it this morning? (laughs) Oh gosh. The heavens gave gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. So, sorry, forgive me if this is trying to fall off my ears. Um, Rain is important. Let's not complain about the rain. There's a lot of countries in the, in, around the world who are desperate for some rain. So let's get some buckets and send it. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, desperate for some rain. So Elijah prayed. And as he prayed, he changed things. He changed things with his prayers. Can you change things with your prayers? Yes. Absolutely you can. And we do. Amen. Now, powerful prayer produces powerful uh, results. 
but it must be earnest and heartfelt praying. So, 2 Corinthians 7, 14, uh, another great scripture, 2, sorry, Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says this, um, if my people, we're very familiar scripture, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, what does that, is that if important? Yeah. Meaning, if it's either it will happen or it won't happen, depending on us. Yeah. Often we think it's all God. Uh, no, no, God's given us authority and he's given us the power of prayer. If my people, how many of my people, God's people, do we have in here this morning who are called by my name? How many are called by his name? Amen. Will humble themselves. That's quite a key there. Sometimes, you know, it's pride that doesn't let you pray. Humble yourselves. Just humbling yourselves is uh, so important. Sometimes... Oh, I'm just trying to be sensitive here to what the Lord's saying. Sometimes it's almost, well, God, I just haven't got the time to pray. My, my life is so important. That's really what we're saying. When we don't gather to pray, when we don't give him time. Now, we can be praying at home, and we should be. But then there's important times that we need to be coming together to pray. And uh, God puts great uh, strength and, and uh, power to that. Uh, pray and seek my face. There's times that we do that in prayer. Lord, what are you saying? Lord, what do you want? Rather than just, well, I'm going to da 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 in prayer. It's seeking God and humbling ourselves before him. And if they will turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You see, one of the things that, that has been happening with COVID, I believe, is that people more so have been turning to prayer. Uh, even those who don't know the Lord, one of the things that uh, was happening during the first uh, beginnings of the, of the uh, virus was people were uh, getting Bibles, apparently a big influx of people getting Bibles because they were trying to understand what was, what was going on. So hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. So if you're not happy about the way that your land is, and we'll say right now how the state of our nation is, well then who's, who's God looking to do to, make, to change it? Well said, top marks, fantastic, because it's fact. You know, sometimes all we want to do is complain. We complain about the government, and we complain about this, and we complain about that. And you know what? One day the Lord's going to say to us, and I believe he's even saying to us now, he's going to say to us, will you stop complaining and do what I've told you to do? You can enforce change because your power is power your prayer thank you thank you thank you your prayer is powerful i gave you the clue there didn't i your prayer is powerful so if we don't believe that then we're not going to utilize it why don't we believe it because we just think well i'm just little me what can i do well then look at what the word says and who you are you're not just little you. You are a born again child of the living God. You have the greater one living on the inside of you. See, when, if that's your attitude, it shows me how little of the word you know and you're living out. Still lovely? Yeah. Thank you. For the rest of you, you've got to anyway. <laughs> so it's important that we recognize that who we are in Christ. If you don't know who you are, you're a child of God, you are a powerful uh, Holy Ghost person, you're a joint heir, you're a co-laborer. Do you believe it? Because that's what the word says you are. Now when you believe that, then you just are ready to take your place. You don't have this mindset of, well, what can I do? I'm just poor little, I'm just a little, you know, no, you're not. 
No, you are blessed and wonderfully privileged to have the greater one living on the inside of you. Now, we need to pray prayers that avail with God so powerfully that they can change the course of nature, they can change the course of, of governments, they can change uh, countries. Prayer that changes people and nations. Prayer that allows God to work mightily throughout the earth in these end times. That's what he's wanting from his kids. That's what he's wanting from his church. But what happens, and sadly not just this church, but often many churches can be similar. What happens, prayer meetings, very few people turn up. It's gone awfully quiet. Just the faithful few. I believe there's going to be rewards in heaven for those who have given of their time to get before the Lord and spend their time in prayer. I'm convinced of it. There's going to be rewards. Now, don't feel bad, because what can we do about it? Well, uh, I'll, I'll tell you now what we can do about it. Um, we can repent before the Lord. We can ask him to forgive us for desiring other things more than him. Sometimes it's our busy lives. Very often it is, isn't it? And of course we know the statement, if we're too busy to pray, if we're too busy, then we're too busy. It's making sure our priorities are right. We need to make ourselves available for God to work through us. If we could each just get that revelation, Father, give, give us all that revelation of the fact that we are key people on the earth in these days to bring about his purposes. If I could call out every one of your names, I feel like the Lord would want me to say to each one of you, precious, precious, precious people, how precious and valuable you are to him. How much he needs you. God needs me? Oh, yes, he does. God needs you. He needs you to seek his face. He needs you to pray and ask him. For things you have not because you ask not he needs you I'm just holding on just a fraction here so that it sinks in to each and every one of us uh, and don't have that well you know he's got somebody else no no what we're doing there is we're rejecting what God has given us and who he's made us. And that, to be honest, is a bit of a slap in the face to the Lord. How could God use a simple man like Elijah? He found the vital key to pray down the power of God upon the earth. He discovered it. And in 1 Kings 17, he actually uh, said something very interesting. 1, 1 Kings 17. He says, The God before whom I stand, he says, there will be no rain. We needed to do that this morning, didn't we? <laughs> Elijah lived in daily fellowship and communion in the presence of God. And this is a vital key, isn't it? Prayer is not something that we just turn on. We have specific times of prayer. But really, we're fellowshipping with the Lord. We're communing with him out of our relationship with him wanting to please him, wanting to obey him. You see, he knew God. And that's where the power is. He knew his God. 
How much do you know your God? He knew how wonderful God was, how powerful God was, and his love relationship <clears throat> with him was, uh, was very important to him, but even more important to the Lord. So, uh, and to those of you in the auditorium, I apologize, this microphone's coming in and out, but bless the Lord, the word is going forth. Amen. Amen. Because he knew the living word, he could speak and pray with world-shaking authority. Every one of us has been given authority. That authority is not to be used over people. That authority is to be used in the spirit realm and to be used in prayer. But if you don't believe that you have that authority, if you don't see yourself as who God says you are, then you're not going to use it. You're just going to just float through life. But it won't be on flowery beds of ease, unfortunately, will it? Too many of us mistakenly think that knowing the word is simply quoting scripture. Now, quoting scripture is good, but just doing that there's no power on it. Why? Because it's just religious. Anybody can just quote a few scriptures. Even the devil can do that. He did that in the wilderness. 2 Timothy 3.5 says, In the last days, they have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So you can look super spiritual and pray, but if you don't understand the power that you're producing when you pray, obviously we love the word, but if you try to apply the word without fellowshipping with the spirit of God himself, your life and prayers will be dry and powerless. I believe what God wants to restore to us the spirit of prayer. We need that spirit of prayer. That spirit of prayer comes upon you and you just want to go for it. Amen? Amen? Prayer is something to be enjoyed. It's not a chore. If you think religiously about prayer, then it's going to be a chore. It's going to just be a, relig a religious activity. How hungry are we? for the Lord? It's a good question to ask. How hungry am I for you, Lord? Psalm 42, I love this, Psalm 42. Uh, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O oh God. Are we hungry after him? Are we desperate for him? Are we wanting to come in his presence? We walk daily in his presence, yes I know, but there's a different level of his presence in prayer. Isn't there? Yeah. Prayer is powerful. We have so much power available to us When a person is hungry, the deepest part of his or her spirit begins to call out to God for something to fill that hunger. What's your tummy like when you're hungry? Isn't your tummy crying out to fill that hunger? Well, our spirits are like that. Our spirits are, are really crying out if we could just give the ear to them. But our soul, mind, will, intellect, emotions, our soul gets in the way. You ever noticed? Or is it just me? <laughs> when we desire God more than anything else, then prayer becomes a passion. 
Because really your prayer life shows where your passion is for God. It's gone quiet in here this morning. But it's good because we can think and ponder. We can have this wonderful intimacy with him and find a new depth to your prayer life and see a new power in your prayers. We can and should. And again, how? Repenting before the Lord. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me my desire for you, my hunger for you isn't where it should be. And I don't think any of us could say that it, it is. Forgive me, Lord, that there's other things that I put a pr as a priority rather than praying. Psalm 27 verse 8 says, Your face, Lord, I seek. Now, if we're seeking for something, the word says, seek, and you shall find. Your face, Lord, I will seek. That's not just a casual glance. That's not just a, well, if you happen to be there, great. If not, fine. We should be, and I believe we are a people, going after the Lord, desiring him above all else. I just got a witness to, uh, because we're closing in a few minutes, to just lead us in prayer. Again, we rejoiced earlier about our dear Lillian, who was really very, very sick. And we used the authority that we had and we spoke because there's no distance in the spirit. Didn't we? Yeah. And we spoke and there's power, that power. I mean, were the, were the doctors surprised, shocked? This is bringing really the reality of the, of the fact that there is power in prayer. Yeah. How many people are depending on your prayers for breakthrough. How many people are, are trusting God or maybe they don't know God? See, we need to apply these same prayers to people for, and for people who don't yet know him. So this morning, thank you so much, Lillian, for your testimony there. Let's just talk to the Lord. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we stand before you humbly, asking you to forgive us for the times that you've called upon us to pray and we've been too busy or we've made an excuse. Lord, we repent. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us, Lord. And Father, I thank you that your word says that when we repent, we receive your forgiveness and there is no condemnation. So we don't feel bad. We don't get down. We just do what the word says. And receive your forgiveness and walk in that. Father, I thank you that we make ourselves available for you, Lord, to work through us as a church, as a congregation, as a people. Lord, work through us by your Spirit as we make ourselves available to you and for you. Lord God, help us. Help us with our praying. Help us, Lord God, to understand what your word says and then pick it up and run with it. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.